I must give you a confessional. I'm actually not a really good writer. Uh, a little bit about myself is I actually come from a mixed immigrant status household and my first language isn't English, it's Spanish. And so when I went to school, um, when I immigrated here and permanently stayed in the States, I was in an ESOL uh, class, and so ESOL is English speakers of other languages. There were two tracks. There was the writing track, and there was the speaking track. And hopefully as you're watching this video, you'll know which track I actually participated in, which was the speaking track. The writing students learn how to write in English. That was something I never learned in formal schooling. And I struggled a great deal because I would take my notes in Spanish, translate them into English, and then try to figure it out on my own. When I finally realized this wasn't gonna work because there was so much work to be done, it was just overwhelming. And so it was at that time, ironically, that I first learned about my writing center at Florida International University. And I went there and I became a devotee. And they helped me be able to minimize my need for using Spanish and try to write in English at the first pass. So by the time I finished undergrad, I went to grad school, even though it wasn't pretty, it was a lot better. And by the time I got to my doctoral program, I still struggled, but I at least had some tools that could help me. And all through my entire studies, from undergrad to grad to postgrad, I went to the writing center. And that was a huge asset for me because not only did they understand that I had some challenges, but they saw that I had a willingness to overcome them. And they gave me tricks and tips that now I impart to my students. Often teachers will give you guidelines and or a rubric, so use them, they're there to help you. I would recommend if your teacher is willing, if you're able to do an advanced draft, even if it's just the outline of your thoughts on paper, turn it in, but turn it in with ample time because some of us would be very willing to look at it and give you some feedback before you go and start putting the work toward it. The other thing that I've done to help me is I block off time. I have a, what's known as a fixed flex schedule. And so I block off chunks of time for writing. I also use something called the Pomodoro method. So that, the idea of the technique in short is, is that you work for about 25 minutes and you focus on a specific task, no distractions. You give yourself some type of time to rest. And so you have something to look forward to when you finish, but you also don't feel like you're being deprived of other things. Try doing 10 minutes of solid writing and give yourself a 10 minute break then go back and do another 10 minutes of writing. And over the course of an hour, you would have had 30 minutes of free time, which is probably less free time than you normally give yourself, but you would have had 30 minutes of writing, which is probably more writing that you would have had. People who are in our professions have a great deal of subject matter expertise. They have a huge amount of internal knowledge about how societies function and what people are struggling with and how they can be better served. And so what I find is as social work and human services professionals, we're collecting information from one client to another client to another client. And we're starting to see patterns and trends across generations, races, ethnicities, relationships, religions. And as we start to see these patterns and trends across society, then we can actually inform how laws are fashioned, how society is built. We start to see what are some strengths that our communities have, as well as some of the deficits. And we can make recommendations on how to minimize those deficits and magnify the strengths. So for our profession, I see it writing as paramount. We find a way to help you understand the human condition and have a compassionate heart, while also understanding the facts, the stats, the data that rules the minds of many rational-minded people to help make a compelling argument. Now in our program, half of our students have employment prior to graduation and within six months they either all have employment or they're in graduate school. And I think it's in part because of their skilled writing that they've been able to demonstrate that even though they may struggle, and all of us do, is they have the techniques to help them overcome the struggle. They have the resources to help them persist and they have a network that will help them be successful.